Hi, Joey. How are you today? Great. How are you? Good. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Thanks again for your time. We really Hello. learned a lot about uh, your last uh, video cast about how to set up some homes. But today I want to switch over to some career uh, um, questions that I were a I've been asking people in the area here in San Francisco. So um, someone asked me, she was having a little bit of problem with employee turnover. And she was saying, you know, is it my bad, is it bad feng shui or is it my own astrology? Why am I attracting such negative people or people that I can't keep in my, my company? Okay, um, is she attracting negative people or is, is it that she cannot see people? Because it's two different problems. Now, the reason I say that is because when people have a problem, they just categorize them into, oh, I'm losing employees, you know. Um, it, there are two reasons generally. One is caused by the, the boss herself, because perhaps she may have an attitude issue. Or the other thing is that the company really cannot keep people and they, they get along really well. So now one is external, one is internal. Now if it affects the person running the company, meaning the boss, then one should check her sitting location. If that sector, that room is actually conducive for people matters, and more importantly, the ability to encourage and motivate and inspire others. If the boss is not doing that, who wants to work for this boss, you know? Now, then the other factor is, um, if the company itself has got no growth, well, there's no growth, that means the, company, the, the uh, employees will not see a future. If they don't see a future, who wants to stay in the same place, right? Right. So, if we would see the problem first, and then we apply function accordingly, then we can fix it. First, we need to diagnose it. Good advice, good advice. So then another person asked me how does she, she was looking at a little bit of career advancement and, you know, asking for promotion and moving up in her company. She feels like she's a, a good employee. How can either her personal astrology or feng shui help her with career advancement? Okay, now, uh, in terms of career advancement in Feng Shui, it is star 9 and star 1. So this year, in the year 2010, it is in Northwest and the West sector. Now, most people would have gotten the opportunity or at least a sign of possible promotion if they start using either of these sectors, where uh, opportunities are given but missed. That means there's something wrong with that person. Meaning they, they think they are deserving, but there could be some issues that are not out that case, then the sector to look for would be in the east sector. Okay. Now what we look for, we actually see what is in the east area of the home. Perhaps the, this area is missing, this area you have all your um, stuff, stuff, old stuff there, you know, the cheese being blocked, so maybe you want to adjust the area to allow the tree to move again. So there are, there are these three sections of the home. Is where I will look at to see if there are any improvements that we can uh, make. Excellent. And then another person asked about they're, you know, they're thinking about changing their career. We've got a high unemployment here in the United States and maybe other parts in the world, but she was saying, well, like, what are my best career options for me? Like, how do I find out what am I best suited for? How can we find that in feng shui or the Chinese metaphysics? Well, um, there are a few things that one can do, and recently I've just put up this class called Design Your Destiny, and in that class we talk about profiling. Um, different people would have different profiles, different um, characteristic traits, attitude, behavior, beliefs, you know, and um, because of their profiles, they are suited to do certain type of job. So one should actually look at uh, their profile. So in general, I have um, characteristic traits, and then we have um, structures, which talk about behavior, and profiles that talk about role. Let's talk about the easy, but let's talk about structure. Structure-wise, we have the wealth structure. Now, these are astrology, but the wealth structure is like the manager. One who likes to control everything. If you're a control freak, you like to be in control, that means you're a doer, you're a hands-on person, then you should see for the major roles, okay? If you are an influence structure, meaning influence star, your story chart, that is your system follower, you should only join a company with a pre-established system. Don't try to reinvent your own, don't start your own business because you cannot, you're not made to do that, okay? So join a existing system, you look upon it, that will be the best thing for you to go. And if you discover you're an awful structure, meaning you're a creator profile, means you like to create, you don't have to be controlled. 
So in that circumstance, then what we should do is to think about branding. Think about being the star yourself. Think about how you can attract wealth instead of you trying to look for a job. Okay. Then there is the companion structure. A companion structure is people person. People person means that your wealth, your job, your, your entire life is about um, people. So develop networks. Meet more people. Join more associations. Get contacts. Use your contacts. Match make people, and that's how your your money is coming. And the final one is what resource structure. Resource structure, uh, according to the chart, is the what the uh, thinkers. And these are people who like to analyze stuff. They will spend a lot of time thinking about problems, looking for all the details, all the small, small pieces and facts. So if you are a thinker, you are an analyzer. So uh, um, your best job is to look for data. Okay, in your job, you get security and confidence from, from facts and figures. So if that's the case, you should be more involved in, for example, accounting, engineering, architecture, doing the research, looking for numbers. Okay, hope that helps. That's, that's good. And, and you said you're offering a course on this. When is that going to be and where? Right, your dancing will be uh, towards the end of the year, around the um, end of October and uh, uh, November. And uh, if you're interested, we could um, come and have a look. And in the meantime, there are some books that you can study on uh, behavior as well. We call it the structures. And um, check it out. Yeah. You know, and then I have the, this is kind of an off-the-wall question, but you know what? I get all, I get all kinds of questions, but here it goes. Okay. I, have a, I have a person who's a professional gambler. And he okay. said, and so here's this question. So here's the, you know, the career that people choose to, to make money in these crazy times. But he said, okay, I'm going to be going, you know, I spend a lot of time in Las Vegas and I heard that the Northeast and the Southwest are bad sectors. Should I stay out of those in the casinos? Uh, no, actually, you should stay on the opposite end, you know. Ah. Because, uh, if uh, the Southwest, then more people will lose money. So being a Northeast, Money. Okay, there you so go. That, so that's what we talk about love, but um, this is a very interesting question. Um, I look here in Asia, there are a lot of gamblers as well. <laughs> yeah. of, uh, um, now, there's this thing if you are gambling based on luck, okay, you then you're not a professional gambler, you are basically uh, just trying a luck. And if you really want to see that now, you will notice that more people who win or are strike in lotteries or, or win in game of chance have high forehead. Okay? Ah. And why? Why? Because heaven, man, and earth, <laughs> heaven, sec heaven section of the forehead represents a person's um, uh, an uncontrolled environment is given to you. Okay? So basically, when you talk about game of chance, it's heaven luck. So you need to look at the heaven portion. And the color, of course, will need to be brighter than the rest of the face. The cheek color is strong. And the second thing, you look at your palm. The palm usually is reddish color. But when it turns white, not pale, white color or very light color, for us you have a high forehead, then your game chance is stronger and uh, better. Now most of the time you don't see this, and when you see this, it's only in the flash of that moment, okay, that you don't know, have to keep your time for game chance, that's how you see it. But obviously it's become truly healthy. You can't just take chances all the time. You need some skill and some proper strategy, okay? So I think that's more important to understand. Yeah. Well, according to my hand and maybe my forehead, I think I better stay out of the casinos and, and do a more serious <laughs> study. <laughs> I would not do well in Vegas. Well, you know, for some, though, that's that's good advice, though. That's good advice. So high forehead and, and the palms we need to look at. So, okay, Joey, I know that was a, a stretch on uh, the gamblers, but, hey, there, we've got to make a living somehow here, huh? So thanks yeah. for your time today. But um, if people want to get a hold of you, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, two things, they can log on to my Facebook, uh, it's facebook.com slash jovejjp, so um, check it out, and uh, if you'd like to know a couple of courses, you can log on to masteryacademy.com. Okay, well thanks for your time Joey, and if you want to know more about Kathleen Horvath and Five Elements Group, you can log on to www.fiveelements.com. We'll see you soon Joey, thanks for your help today. See you. Bye.